Hi guys, this is Jason Zach from Nathaniel School of Music. In this video, we are going to focus on two very interesting things, one genre and one technique and put them together into a nice compact tutorial. I'm going to call this video Indian Arpeggios or maybe we should also call it Eastern Arpeggios. You'll find these sort of rhythms a lot in the Eastern parts of the world like the Middle East, India, the subcontinent in general. And a lot of these cultures have a rhythm pattern which is based on a beat division system which you need to know, which probably didn't originate that quickly in the West as it did in the East and it features triplets dividing the beat by three. So in this video, I'm first going to teach you triplets, what is a triplet, how you divide it, how you count it, etc. Then we are going to create arpeggio patterns rather organically if you ask me. It's going to be something where I just give you a kind of a prompt or a guide and then you can take it to town. And the left hand is purely organic but we will try and keep it as diatonic as possible for today's lesson i've chosen the d major scale which is two sharps f sharp g a b c sharp d okay you can do this on any scale uh, which it, it, i like d because it kind of suits my singing voice as you heard in the intro video so yeah and to support all of these methodologies or all these techniques we have all of the exercises notated for you and waiting on our Patreon page. The staff notation is there as a PDF download. You also have MIDI files. It's waiting for you on our Patreon. Before we get started, it'll be awesome if you could hit that subscribe button and turn on that bell icon for regular notifications. Or you could go through the video and maybe at the end of the video don't forget to hit that subscribe button and turn on the bell icon for regular notifications so i am taking something really simple in the right hand a fifth chord on the key of d so that would be d a d d major's root is d d major's fifth is a and d major's octave is d a nice power chord but not played in the lower parts of the piano played in the higher part above above middle C. You could also invert this chord A D A and for the entire lesson that's all it's going to be. It's just going to be the D fifth chord maybe in this position and maybe in this position. I may use this shape or this shape so get used to this shape. This is the root position of the fifth chord that will be thumb, middle finger and pinky and this is the inversion of the fifth chord which will be thumb, index finger and the little finger. There we go. So we are going to play that as an arpeggio. Before we play the arpeggio, I'll give you a few theoretical things and so on and so forth. And the left hand will get acquainted within the D major scale itself, which are those seven notes. And you'll be playing bass notes to complement the fifth chord in the right hand. For example, D goes quite well with D fifth. Uh, F sharp goes really well and it also adds color because it's a new note, isn't it? B goes beautifully well. That also adds some color. And A makes it a very suspended, dominant kind of sound which resolves back to D. Pretty much all the notes of the D major scale will sound great in the bass. D, E, F sharp, G. And look at my right hand. It's just holding the fifths. That's it. C sharp, D, this goes on, D, C sharp, B, A, G, they all go well, so we kind of build chord progressions without even playing triads, without even playing your usual run of the mill chords, we'll just use the fifth chord in the right hand and the bass note movement in the left hand, and the bass notes I leave to you, it'll be completely as per what you enjoy playing. So the first arpeggio pattern, which I've talked about a lot in my arpeggio videos, you can check out a few links in the description. We have some basic ones and we have some fairly advanced ones. You should definitely scan through our YouTube channel. A few arpeggio links will be in the description. So if you take a traditional arpeggio, this is how we would play it and count maybe eighth notes. One and two and three and I'm starting from the lowest note. I guess that works. So this is 
you could argue a simple or a trivial arpeggio 1 and 2 and 3 and 4 and now this is by no means triplets right we are not playing triplets here so what we need to do is change this around but i just wanted to start here from ground zero and this can get you places If you change the bass it tells a story I'd encourage you to sing along sing anything you feel really even I'm just singing what's coming to my head at the moment so So that's your eighth note study and more on these eighth note variations in a lot of my earlier arpeggio videos so I'm not going to spend too much time on that I'm going to go straight into what I'm calling as Indian triplets or Indian triplet arpeggios so before we get into even the indianness so to speak we will learn tr the triplet feel which is easily practiced with two arpeggios which i am going to show you the first style of arpeggios is take the same one but swing it like we do across the globe so to swing you just delay the and one and slightly later one might argue you're getting into the world of triplets and a good way to count it would be one and a two and a three and a four and a one and a two and a keep the pulse and one and a two and a three you could also say one triplet two triplet but i think that's a tongue twister so you might as well go uh, one and a two and a three and a four or in india we say tak it tak it tak it tak it tak it probably the easiest way to say this tha being meaning the one kita meaning the anders so now bringing that in one and a two and a three and a So when you don't play the and one and a uh, when you leave out the and and then access the a uh, you pretty much get traditional swing as we know it yes there can be percentages of swing which you can mess around with all musicians like to do that but for the most part you can kind of proudly call it swing by just going one and a uh, two and a uh, three and uh, one and a uh, two and a uh, three now a lot of musicians will not count this as one and a two and a. we'll continue to say one and two and three and four by just delaying the one and two, which is straight eighth notes you're just delaying that by you know the the three and a four and a one a two and a three there we go it is delayed so if you can feel that with from within you don't need to count triplets but you need to count triplets to play the rest of what i'm going to teach you today so let's get to saying one and a two and now bring in the other notes of the arpeggio and it's pretty much what i did earlier but we do something like there we go This is swing. Swinging straight. Swing. Okay, I'm not going to spend too much time comparing swing and straight. Uh, right after this video, you uh, you need to head over to my video on swing versus straight. We leave the link in the description. It. I play a variety of instruments and show you the differences between playing music swing I demonstrated on the guitar and a few other instruments so do check that out so straight in a nutshell is 50% of the beat ta 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 swing kind of triplets or delaying the and from the 50% mark you could say traditionally to the 66.67 mark or the 2/3 fractional mark and then you also have the 1/3 which already starts sounding indian which i'm going to break down slowly as we move forward so that's your swing so why not bring in triplets as well and create a nice triplet arpeggio which would be 
all the divisions so i've talked about swing earlier tum 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 versus tik tik tak kit tak kit tak kit tak kit tak kit tak kit triplet you're playing pretty much every division since there's a lot going on i would encourage you to maybe slow it down a bit relax your wrist maybe move your wrist in circles that will relax it or use the entire arm to play your music so kit tak kit tak kit tak kit tak kit triple it now for the triplets i have two interesting arpeggios notated for you one is you can just go your merry way with start just this pattern lmh lmh as i'm calling it low middle high low middle high so tak it you can also create an interesting variation where you go where you're changing the start of the down beat instead of the one you're making it five tak it tum tak it tum i quite like this triplet better and again organically change your bass maybe one one note every bar i like that f sharp that's the third five play with some dynamics So these are your sort of vanilla patterns which I've developed. Now getting into some Indian stuff, okay? So I have quite a few Indian triplet patterns notated as arpeggio patterns. So the first one I have here which I'm calling as Indian arpeggios would be I'll play it and then teach you. This one. So what's going on here? I'm playing one and a two and So instead of playing everything at one and the er, uh, two and the er, uh, I am playing one, the er uh of the one, and then two and the and of the two. So it creates a very good contrast together. Okay. that but okay so that's how you can kind of create some indianness because in the western world it's just swung and that's the only use case of the triplets which i guess that culture traditionally would have while in indian music you tend to use pretty much all the triplets and more so moving on to triplet pattern number 2 let me play it and then teach that will be So what did I do there one and a two and a I'm skipping the down beat of the two which is going to sound really cool one and a two and a one and a two Compared to the old one I struck it on the down of the two two and two and now pattern number 3 a few more to go so let me play it and then teach so quite predictable really it's 1 and 2 and 3 and 4 and both striking the one and and then you kind of leave out the a uh, or you can just linger on the and to the a uh of the beat and 
sort of cases in all these cases rather you need to try and imagine some kind of a guest musician which is more of a ghost rather than a real human if you don't have a friend play jamming with you so keep a basic kind of groove in your head it could be something like doom tak to the doom tak to the doom just imagine something to play along to i know there's a metronome i know in this day and age there are a lot of backing tracks which you could also consider but this will be a nice way to internally feel a drum groove while you practice you know so okay and then the one we are learning now Okay, moving on now a little bit more briskly to the next Indian pattern, which would be I'll play it and show you. So this is called actually in Western music as a polyrhythm or a hemiola. It's a so if I maintain a pulse, one, two, three. The right hand's going one, two, three, one, two, three, one. So it's almost a three against the normal two, which is going on in my other hand. But actually speaking, these are quarter note triplets. A quarter note triplet is nothing but an eighth note triplet with every alternate beat as a rest. So one and a two and a three and a four and a one and a two and a three and a, that's how you count it. Doom, tuck, doom, doom, tuck, doom. A lot of drum music will go on and on like this in a lot of the Indian folk music. Doom. Dum dum tak dum one and eight and a three and up and that's your quarter note triplet. Dum tak dum dum tak dum dum tak dum dum tak dum dum. Okay, we have a nice polyrhythm video which we made, so do check that out in the description. So this was the fourth one. One and eight and one and eight and one and eight and. And it's all about keeping that count one and a two and a three and a four and a one and a, as you keep that count going it should work out okay so now i've given you four rather simple ones now i'm going to call the next few as combos that means i'm going to incorporate a couple of the rhythms we used earlier and just put them together let me play you one and then teach it there we go So what what started it off the hemiola or the quarter note triplet tang 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 ta 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 then two a three and three and four and three and a uh, nothing three and a uh, four and uh, three and a uh, four so tum pam pam para para pum pam pam para para ti ru ru ti ru ru Sometimes I tend to get carried away and do some of the old rhythms, but you get the idea. Try to maybe pin yourself down on one or two of these at uh, every ten, fifteen minutes, and then change it as you practice. So let me play that again. Okay, moving to the next combo pattern, it'll be swing and then all in all the triplets. So that sounds quite simple, actually. So swing triplet, tri swing triplet, swing triplet, swing eighth note triplets, right? a combo of what we did earlier again the left hand is left to be organic but if you see i'm playing simple stuff i'm just playing octaves either on the pulse or i'm just holding them and i'm choosing a note diatonically of course i don't want to play a note like maybe E flat, which is not part of the D major scale, unless you really like that. So, moving on to the next pattern, we have just a few more left. So we go. Let me play it and then teach. Fair enough. 
fairly simple combo right all the triplets in l m h and then one and or in this case uh, two and one and a two and a three and a four and one and a two and put some dynamics always imagine you're playing with a, mu- a vocalist or a band or a drummer at least there we go it's an next rhythm let's move on to the next one i'll play it slowly and then teach This is a combination of eighth notes which we learned at the very beginning of the lesson. The normal eighth notes, right? So now I'm combining that with triplets. So you go You you probably would benefit by saying and look at the arpeggio l m l m h that's what i'm doing tak it tak it tak it you may want to spend some time focusing on the triplets very well to compare it with the eighth notes and generally try to get that flavor of the triplets inside you i've done an interesting video called triplets or not question mark so it's basically a Uh, a, a lot of the myths or a lot of the wrong notions of what a triplet actually is and i think in that video there are almost all of them so we leave that also in the description most of what you think is a triplet even as a seasoned musician is not a triplet so do watch that video a triplet divides the beat into three units that's that's what it is so uh, that was about the uh, quaver meeting up with the eighth note triplet uh, let me play that again there we go and uh, moving on so i'll play you the next one and teach so it's just the same triplets but eighth note in the third beat i've introduced a semi quaver uh, triplet or a 16th note triplet 16th note triplets divide a beat into six equal units so it's just going to be double speed So slow your whole performance down I would imagine There we go Tuck it tuck it tuck it tuck it tuck you can still say tuck it tuck it tuck it tuck it tuck So we have one more for you that would make it a nice round number of 10. Let me play it and then teach. Uh, quite a few combos that I think there are three combos going on. You can do four if you want. I thought three was enough and more for at least my head. So the first beat is kind of swinging second beat third beat are just your usual eighth note triplets takita takita taka and then that's your indian triplet combo taka taka that's one and and an honorable mention needs to be given to a rhythm which we do very often which is actually triplets let me play it for you there we go you know what i'm talking about roadhouse blues tam ta tam and 
and so on right so might as well have the roadhouse blues arpeggios also in this set uh, so that will make it uh, a non round figure but nevertheless it has to be squeezed in now all of these variations have been conveyed to you with just a simple fifth chord in root position you could invert it you could also do this over an entire big chord progression I didn't want to complicate things with an entire set of harmonic rules and inversions and all of those theoretical things so I've just kept a simple fifth chord so that we can exclusively focus our attention on the rhythmic aspects of the arpeggio right guys so that was about indian triplet arpeggios I hope you found the lesson useful and if you're not an indian musician hopefully it gives you some insights into some of the musical movements practiced in this part of the world and if you are an indian musician probably you could use this technique while jamming with your friends with arpeggios so we never seem to have enough of them these arpeggios right so all of the notes are waiting for you on our patreon channel just for a 5 dollar a month subscription do consider heading over there it will also support our channel and what we do greatly thanks a ton for watching the video cheers and catch you in the next one